I don't want to be changing too much my exposure. Okay, so make sure that when you are... Bonjour everybody, welcome back to my studio. Today I'm excited because we are going to create a LUT for Sony S-Log3 that you can use on your projects and also load in your onset monitor when you're shooting with an A7S3, FX6, FX3, FX30, whatever, okay? If you're shooting with a um, Sony camera, I would encourage you to shoot an S-Log3, S-Gamma3 Cine. This is going to ensure that you utilize the most dynamic range from your camera. So today we've got a Sony S-Log3 clip, all right? I believe this is from an A7S3. And um, first of all, I'm going to convert this clip into Rec 709, all right? So I'm going to open my effects here and I'm going to search for color space transform, okay? I'm going to drop that into node number one. Now there's a bunch of checkboxes that we need to look at. It wants to know the input color space in gamma of our source clip and the destination. An input color space, I want to select S gamut 3 cine. So in the drop down, I'm going to look for S gamma 3 cine, okay? Hit enter. Gamma, which is the transfer function, I'm going to select S log 3, okay? Uh, type in S with the arrow keys going down, S log 3, okay? Boom, there you go. Output color space, let's select Rec 709 and Gamma 2.4, which is usually the space that you're going to grade to when you're grading on the reference monitor or if you have an onset monitor, for example, that is the most common space that you will want, okay? So, and here I'm going to make sure that the gamut mapping method is set to saturation compression. This is going to ensure that the um, out of gamut colors are going to be reined in and contained into Rec 709 in an elegant way. And I'm going to leave the rest as is, okay? So that is my node to Rec 709, all right? Good, so before that node, we are in log, okay? So if I disable that node, all right? When I'm going to perform operations in that node, I'm going to be in log, okay? So just enabling that back. And uh, first, I just want to open my exposure for my clip because if I am creating a lot, well, I want it to be designed for properly exposed camera negative, okay? And this one, it, it's a bit under, so we're just going to open up um, our exposure with offset here, just slightly, it doesn't need much, okay? Just there, all right? And also going to inject a little bit of green, all right? Before, after, all right? So there we go, all right? My image is ready to be looked in a way, okay? So I'm going to call this node base. Now I'm going to create another node, all right? Um, create a serial node here. I wanna create a bit of a stylized look for today, okay? So for that, I'm going to go into my curves, all right, custom curves, and I'm going to click editable splines, and I'm going to click here and drag on that handle all right, so it's there, same for the bottom here, and I just wanna create a little bit of an S-curve, okay? And um, I'm going to raise that portion a little bit, okay? That's before, it's after. I don't wanna be changing too much my exposure, okay? So make sure that when you are deactivating and reactivating that node, you're not changing your exposure too much. There are ways to 
preserve precisely middle gray. We're not going to dive into that today. But just for now, just make sure that when you deactivate and reactivate this node, your exposure doesn't move too much, ideally, and you're going to be good. Before I continue on with today's video, I have a small favor to ask you guys. Most of you who regularly watch the content here are not subscribed yet to the channel. It would massively help and support it if you could please take a minute to pause the video and subscribe, especially if you're enjoying the content that I'm uh, doing here. Uh, it would massively help. Thank you guys. Now let's go on with the video. So I'm going to call this node contrast. All right. And uh, so that's before, it's after, before, after. Maybe it's a little bit too strong here. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to drag that point and fade it just a little bit. Okay. So that's before, it's after. So that it's sort of like reducing the opacity of my contrast operation. All right. Before, after. All right. Quite happy with that for the moment. Now I'm going to create another serial node after my contrast node, and I'm going to call this saturation. All right. And um, I just want to reduce the saturation a little bit because I feel it's a little bit too strong for the look that I'm going for today. Just want to reduce my saturation here. So there you go. So that's before it's after before after. All right. There you go. Happy with that. Going to create another serial node and I'm going to call this tint. I'm going to go into my curves and I'm going to hit my red curve right there. Click the most bottom point and I just want to inject a little bit of cool into my image just like that. And I'm going to grab my utmost point. Let's make these curves bigger for you. Okay, so you see the dip in the reds that is injecting some coolness into my image. And I just want to um, protect the top end of uh, my image. And by the way, if you want to see more about split toning in order to create these, uh, make sure to check out my split tone video that I did recently. You're going to learn a ton of things in there. So yeah, just basically protecting uh, the top end here so that my highlights are not tinted cool. Okay. All right. So that's before that's after before after quite subtle, but I'm enjoying that so far. So, uh, if I deactivate those three nodes, that's where we started. That's where we are now. Okay. Before after pretty cool. I'm going to create another node after my saturation node, and I'm going to call this a warper. Okay. And let's open my color warper. So you click on that tab and uh, let's go into my color warper. Let's open this window a little bit bigger. Okay. And I just want to kill a little bit of reds in the image because I like the cool tones of the image, like the greens and uh, science that we have created. But um, I feel it's a little bit too orangey for my taste for the sort of like cool look that I want to go for today. So let's try and mute it a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to grab this branch. All right. I'm going to click on uh, selecting the column here and I'm going to pull my saturation down. And this is C going to reduce uh, the saturation. Okay, for the orange red vector right there. So that's before that's after before after. All right, pretty cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select all these nodes and hit create compound node. All right, I'm going to call this look. So if I turn off this node right here, okay, it's deactivating what the look in our transform is doing. And if I turn it on now, it's back on. Okay. So I want to cook that into a lot. Okay. So let's do that right now. And I don't want the base node to be 
taken into account because the base node is only for that image, okay? It's not for the other images. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm turning this node off and uh, just making sure that the look that we have created is turned on. Now let's go into our clips, okay? Let's right click on our thumbnail here and let's go generate lot and let's go 33 point cube. This is going to make sure that you have enough precision for your monitor, but also that it's not too overwhelming, okay? Because if you um, export a 65 point cube lot, your monitor is probably not going to be able to take it. So for uh, making sure that it's most compatible, let's create a 33 point cube lot. Let's export it now. So I'm going to export it into my desktop, okay? And I'm going to call this look YouTube. Let's see where it is. So on my desktop, I'm going to rename this lot look YouTube because it has an extension that I'm not interested in. And uh, I'm going to copy this look, okay? So uh, command C. And now let's go into our preferences right there, hit the cog wheel. Let's go into color management. I'm going to scroll down and here in lookup tables, which is lots basically, I'm going to go open lot folder. And you're going to place the lot that we've just created in there, okay? So I'm going to paste it in there. There you go, okay? So I've pasted my lot there, and I'm going to now click, then I'm back in Resolve, Update Lists, uh, and hit Save. So now we are back into the node graph, and I'm going to create a layer node. And um, the layer node, basically, it's going to take precedence over what is happening in here, okay? So if I deactivate the layer node, now the look is showing, okay? And if I activate this one, it's basically on top, okay? So it's completely overlapping what we've just done. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we are going to load our lot into node number four and compare it to the look and make sure that it's identical. Now that my node number four is selected, let's go into our LUT folder and fish for the look that we have just created, okay? So um, here on the root folder, okay, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look for, okay, look YouTube. Let's double click, all right? Boom, there you go, I've double clicked on uh, the LUT here, and it's loaded the LUT to node number four. Now, what we've got to do is simple. We've got to turn off and on this node, okay? So that's before, after, before, after, and good. Our image looks exactly the same without or with the LUT. It's identical to the look that we have created. Let me show you, if we turn off the look, and now I turn off the LUT, then I have a log image, okay? So if I turn on the LUT, you see what it's doing. All right, good, and if I reactivate my base node there, now we've got what we've created before, okay? So there you go, and what you do with that LUT, you can use it on your project right there, and you can also load it into your camera monitor if you want to preview what you are shooting on set with that LUT. And now you have creative control over your LUT. If you want to make modifications, just go back into Resolve and repeat that same process and you're going to be good. I'd be actually curious um, with the looks that you come up with, with that technique. Comment down below, let me know if you found that tutorial useful. Tell me about the looks. And um, yeah, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel not to miss the future videos that I'm going to make. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Salut, prenez soin de vous.